Hi there, in this third video in this video series on Cubase AI and LE 10.5, we're gonna look at how you can start to create and access beats inside of Cubase. Then we're going to look at how you can start to construct some creative musical building blocks out of nothing. So you can come up with a whole creative idea just using the beat making and compositional tools inside of Cubase. Let's start with the blank project. Once again, I'm going over to access my media bay and the VST instruments. And this time I'm going to select Groove Agent SE. I'm going into a content pack. And once I click on that content pack, I can see all of the presets included in that content pack. And I just need to select one to be able to start to preview it and see if I like the sounds that are included inside the presets. Once I'm happy with the sounds and I can preview them on a MIDI keyboard or on the keyboard in the bottom of the media bay, I can simply double click on it to load it over into the project area. And once it's loaded into the project area, it's loaded the instrument itself. I can open the instrument by clicking on this button here. Now we've opened Groove Agent SE. In this tab, the instrument tab, we've got all the different components of the drum kit. So all of the different hits that are included. In the window itself in Groove Agent, we can go through and edit these different types of sounds, or additionally, we can add our own samples into the mix of the drum kit itself. You use these tabs to go through the different editors inside of Groove Agent. On the left-hand tab, we've got the pattern bank. So this gives us combinations of beats that have already been created by well-known beat producers. And there's always something there I find that means I can start working straight away, which means in a matter of seconds, I'm already being creative. The next thing is to decide on the tempo and you can mix this tempo around at a later time. It doesn't matter because Groove Agent SE will always follow the tempo of your track. Once I've found the pattern that I like, I can simply drag and drop it over onto the track. So I do that by picking up on the pad and dragging it and placing it where I want it. At the moment, I don't have Snap to Grid on. Once I activate that button, my events will only move around according to the grid settings that I have. So it might be Use Quantize, for instance, and that means I can only move the event and snap it onto the Quantize settings. I can go and change this to Adapt to Zoom, and that means that as I zoom in and out using the G and H buttons on my computer keypad, you can see the grid changing. And once I move my event, it'll snap to those lines that are visible on my grid. So there's a number of different ways we can customize how we snap events in the main project area onto the grid. This is also the case for the editors down below. As mentioned in the first video, we can quickly copy and paste events by picking up on this handle in the middle of the right hand side of an event and dragging it out to the right hand side. In a matter of moments, I've accessed a beat and now I'm ready to start building on that idea. In terms of housekeeping, once again, it's always a great idea to colorize your track. So you've got this visual representation of different components inside your production. These events that we've created contain MIDI information, which we can access by clicking on the events in the main project area. On the left hand side, we've got a piano scroll with all the MIDI events to the right of that. We can go down and select the drum editor from this drop down menu, and this gives us a much more effective mechanism or tool for editing drums. You can grab the drumstick tool and start entering notes, or you can click on a note that's already been entered to remove it. A neat feature is being able to hold down on the drumstick tool and drag to the right to enter multiple notes based on the grid settings. This is especially useful for entering things like hi-hat hits, where it's going to occur again and quite frequently, so it saves you entering it one by one. There's a really neat feature inside of Cubase which allows us to create a drum map from an instrument and it's right here. Now when I open up Groove Agent and go over to my instrument tab, I can see that the instrument hits inside of this section are different to what's listed in the drum editor until I create a drum map from the instrument. Now the instruments in this list align perfectly with all of the instruments or hits that I have up in Groove Agent SE. Even the patterns are listed there. A really unique way of creating groove is to change velocity. And you can easily do that in the controller lanes in the drum editor. You can select the different instrument parts and you can see all of the hits that you have on that part. Now I can use my mouse to simply raise or lower the velocity. Now, 
Changing the velocity gives a feel of more groove or feeling because humans don't exactly play everything at exactly the same velocity. So it's a really useful tip to get in and start editing the velocity on various drum components when you're creating beats, especially on things like hi-hats. Snares and kick drums you'd probably usually leave alone, so they would be things that would need to be fairly constant. I explained in the first video how we can use presets in the media bay to load a VST instrument. We can also drag and drop the instrument straight over into the track list and now we can use the media bay inside the instrument itself. Once again, you can open and close the interface for the instrument using this button here. Once I've opened it again, the media bay is over in the right hand section of the instrument and I can go in and see all the content packs that I have access to. I've got a couple of extra ones that I've purchased or built myself. So you can use things like categories and subcategories to narrow down your search for instruments and when you find something that you like, it's fairly similar to using the media bay. You basically double click on it and it will load instantly into the slot and you can see just how many instruments or presets are included inside of Hellion Sonic SE. Just to recap what I showed you in the first video, you can go back to the media bay, select the instrument and you'll see all of the content packs that you have available. Once you select the content pack, then you can see all of the presets. Now there's no right or wrong way of loading these presets or previewing them. Sometimes it's going to be faster to do it in the instrument itself and sometimes when you're just having a fish or looking for something, it's just as easy to use the presets in the media bay. And when you find a preset that you like, again, it's a matter of double clicking and it will load into whatever slot you have selected in Hellion Sonic SE. So there's a number of different ways of being able to achieve different things inside of Cubase. And that's one of the things I love about it. Now that we have the beat set up and we've got a track with an instrument and a preset, we can start to record, if that's something you're able to do. Not everyone plays a piano via a MIDI controller, so I'll show you this way of entering information first, and then we'll cover some other concepts later. I've hit record and I'm just playing away, so any idea, and this doesn't need to be the idea that I settle on. It's just a matter of feeling your way around it. Once I select that event, you can see the information that I've recorded down in the MIDI editor, and it's not in time, and I can see that because my notes aren't exactly on the lines in the grid. But that's really easily fixed. Quantizing in Cubase is super easy. Now, quantizing basically means moving your playing into time. The key is really to get the settings right. So a lower setting would be better for when you're playing less notes in your performance, and a higher setting would be better for when you're playing more notes. It's almost as if you're playing faster or slower, but the tempo hasn't really changed. It's basically more notes or less notes. And sometimes it's a matter of just trying a few different settings to make sure that the performance sounds correct after it's been quantized. You just hit this Q button here to quantize everything. And now my playing is exactly in time. And that's really important for contemporary music production because my beats are all exactly in time and if my playing isn't, then it's going to sound a bit loose or sloppy. Sometimes you might want a more organic feel, so maybe quantizing isn't necessarily what you need to do. Nobody's perfect, so of course we've got the editor to start moving any notes that we may have misplayed around. So we can move them up and down to change the actual note itself, and again, we can change the velocity. We can change any of this MIDI information that we've recorded to make sure that the take sounds perfect. In the first video, we took a look at some of the editing tools in the main project area, and the tools in the MIDI editor are fairly similar. At the moment, I'm using the eraser to get rid of some notes that I don't really need. I can zoom in and out using the G and H keys, and I can enlarge the window into full screen mode. Now I'm just tidying up some note lengths, and I can even add more notes. So it's almost as though I'm using or playing more notes than I actually played in the actual recording itself. Another handy thing is to be able to mute notes, so I can go and unmute them later if I think I need them. And I can also change note lengths using this tool here. So I just simply hold down with my mouse and drag down to cut the length of the MIDI information. It's a really useful tool if you've held on to a couple of notes or you just left your fingers down just that little bit too long. One of the big things about contemporary music production is having an eye for detail, and these tools really help us get in and clean up performances. 
I'm just editing the start and the end point in this event and now dragging it backwards and forwards until I find the right place for it. And of course, once again, we can copy and paste by picking up on the handle in the middle of the right hand side of the event. I can shorten the event. So if there's some MIDI information at the end that I don't feel like I need, I can just drag it in. So there's lots of different options for working with MIDI. Let's have a look at another way of creating MIDI information or even composing. Cubase AI and LE have this fantastic feature called the chord track. We had a quick look at it in the first video, but in this video, I want to go into it in depth. If you don't play a keyboard or an instrument, this is an incredible way of composing. Basically, I've created my chord track and now I'm using my pen to draw in X's, which are chords. I'm setting up my monitor track to be that Hellion Sonic SE track that we created before. Now I can use my mouse cursor keys to go backwards and forwards in between the different chords. I can play a chord on my MIDI keyboard and instantly Cubase will tell me what it is. Or if you don't play the keyboard, don't worry because you can use your mouse to select different chords and different chord types. So each chord will have a number of different colors that we can use. So the difference between B flat and B flat seven means that there's an extra note added in giving us a different color or texture. So I'm using my cursor keys and I'm going through and I'm just adding a chord progression. One of the most important things when you're coming up with chord progressions is not to listen to the chords individually, but listen to it collectively. So play the whole thing from start to finish because every progression we come up with is basically a musical sentence. So we need to make sure these chords flow smoothly from one chord to the next. Part of the production process is trying things and then deciding that they don't work. And as I'm listening back to this chord progression, I realize that some of the instrument hits or drum hits inside of Groove Agent, they're clashing with this chord progression that I've now come up with. So what I'm doing is finding those drum hits and I'm just muting them by clicking on the M button on the instrument hits or pads. So that means that even while they're still playing, they're muted, so we can't hear them. So basically what I'm doing is I'm reducing parts in my music production, which is a really important part of production. So rather than adding more, sometimes it's better to remove things to let other ideas come through. I really like this chord progression, but there's something unusual about the drum part, and I've just realized that it's seven bars long, or the events are anyway. So that's easily fixed. I've just dragged the part down, deleted all the other parts, and copied and pasted them out. And now I have a perfect four bar loop, which is gonna repeat over and over again. I keep saying this in videos, we're basically creating musical building blocks. As you can see, I've got two four bar drum events to go underneath the eight bar chord track. If you feel like your tempo is not quite right, you can go down and make changes and everything in your production will follow the tempo. Now I'm going over to another really awesome compositional tool and that's the chord pads. Now chord pads are great if you don't play the keyboard because you can trigger them just using a mouse and you can also drag and drop them into your project. One thing I love about the chord pads is you can also trigger them from an external MIDI controller using just one key and that's that blue area up there in the piano scroll and of course playing that one key will mean that it's entered at the same velocity making you sound basically like a pro. There's also a stack of presets in here and when I say presets, they're different combinations of chords that are here in the actual chord pads. You just need to load a preset and use your mouse. So basically one finger will trigger these different chords. The possibilities are pretty much endless if you're stuck and you need to come up with some sort of idea that you wouldn't usually come up with. Just scroll through the presets, have a play and find something you like. Another really neat feature is being able to adapt or use the chords from the chord track and bring them down into the chord pads. Now we're integrating this original musical idea that we had and we can start to be a little bit more creative. Whereas the chord track is offering us chords wherever we have them entered, we can now start to add different timing elements by triggering these chord pads. And the other thing we can do is use the handles to come up with different chord colors. So down the bottom, we can change the color. On the right hand side, the handles will change where the chords have been played on the keyboard. 
Now, you don't even need to know what an F minor 9 is. Just play around and find it, hear it, and go, okay, that's not cool, or that is really cool. And so straight away, just having a fairly simple chord progression, I've got this chord progression with loads of color and loads of interest, and it sounds a little bit jazzy and funky, and it sounds way cooler than what I had before. You can also go in and you can change the way the chords are being played. So you can change between piano and guitar and different styles of music. We can drag and drop these chords straight up into a VST instrument or MIDI part. And as you can see, they're entered. So we're creating this musical idea once again without actually playing anything. I can delete the chords in the chord track and now I can drag my new chords with these new colors straight up. And basically, my idea has evolved from that original idea that I had in the chord track. I definitely could have come up with these chords using the chord track, but there was something different about using the mouse and playing them in progression in the chord pad. So once again, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever works for you. For me, sometimes the chord track works and other times using chord pads really works. And it'll be a different experience for you. Now I'm muting the chord track because I've already got my chords down here in this Hellion Sonic part and I'm leaving the chord track just in case I need it at a later stage. I'm pretty happy with these chords. If I need to, I can extend the MIDI event inside the MIDI editor and I can just pick up on the bottom right hand corner of the MIDI events and drag them out so that they're going for twice as long. And now I could repeat that process for every MIDI event that's there inside of this part. By now, you're no doubt starting to get the idea that you don't need to be able to play anything to make music inside of Cubase. But here's another way of being able to use the chord pads. Of course, we can trigger them using an external MIDI keyboard or external MIDI pads. So if you have them, you can simply hit record and start to play them using one finger. The nice thing about doing it this way is you're in control of the timing and you don't have to be dragging and dropping. So it's a little bit faster if you can get the timing close enough. It really doesn't matter so much if you don't get the timing right because as we've already seen, we can go in and edit the MIDI information or we can simply find a quantize setting and quantize our performance. Production is a matter of listening to the ideas you've come up with and adding more color or removing things. In this case, I feel like my idea is good and I really like the color of the first sound that I came up with. Now I've got another sound inside of Hellion Sonic SE and I'm just dragging up from the chord pads. I've muted my chord track because it was also playing MIDI information through the new track. I really like this. I feel like these two colors work together and now I've got some space in between the chords. So my track has some breathing room. I'm copying and pasting these musical blocks along. So I'm starting to build my track and there's a lot of repetition in contemporary music. So this is all part of what we do. I've got one really cool final thing to show you. Let's say you're playing along inside of Cubase and you've come up with an idea that you really like, but you didn't record it and you can't remember exactly what you played. Well, it's no problem because using MIDI retrospective record, Cubase is always listening, so your ideas are never lost. Here's what I played, and now I can quantize it, and I can start implementing or using that idea in my track and seeing if it was actually going to work. We had a look at the media bay in the first video, and don't forget that it's always there to add or help your production. So it's a matter of just going over and checking for content and seeing if there's something there that might work in with your track. In this case, I've found a pretty cool drum groove that I think I can use in maybe some sections of this track. So I might filter it at a later stage and we'll have a look at doing this kind of stuff in the mix video later on in the video series. For now, I'm just copying and pasting it out and continuing to build on these musical building blocks. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. Please like this video if you've learned something and subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this. I'll see you there.